We don't thrive in isolation. And frankly, a lot of couples are isolated. And that's one of the problems. Hi, this is Peter Kowaki, and I'm here today with Trey Lovern, who is the founder, a co-founder of uh, Undone Redone. When there is infidelity, um, what are the maybe the best, the three best first steps that uh, a couple can take to start to work through it? It may not be a fast process, it may, but what what are those first three steps? Pressing pause, first of all is not running to any quick decision. You know, that, mm-hmm. that, that quick fix is, I think, in our human nature. We want, uh, this is messy, it's yucky, it hurts, so I want something quick and we want to rush to something. Yeah. It's amazing how many people from the outside will start offering advice. Uh, you know, I think getting a close, uh, so I think pressing pause, but also having not a lot, but I think having healthy community um, as well. Uh, a guy having other men that are safe, that he can, that he can vent, he can talk about emotion, you know, the things that are going on and the same, the same for the, for the female as well. Um, having it's, it, and that's tough because sometimes we want to, we want to protect, we want to keep the image. We don't want you know, other people to know, but hopefully everyone has that safe community because that's, that's where we thrive. Yeah. We don't thrive in isolation. And frankly, a lot of couples are isolated and that's one of the problems. You know, they, they're trying to keep a mask up for the world out there. And so their whole MO is we can't let anybody know we're struggling and it can be so lonely uh, in that. So I think this is an opportunity to so, say, you know, punt that, you know, we've got issues and we need to bring in some people who love us, who are for us, um, and not just on the coupleship, but he needs some men that are going to speak truth to him, some, being willing to say the hard things, to press in, to call forth who he really is. Yeah. And same with her, that are going to listen uh, to her, her pain, not just offer quick fixes. You know, that that doesn't work. You know, and so even you know, kind of brought, to think about you know, some of your listeners, maybe you've never experienced that. But what is it like to be that safe friend? You know, to be that type of friend that's not going to just offer, you know, the quick fix. Here's two quotes. Here's a book. But just be there to listen. You know, just yeah. step into the mess with them and sit a while and maybe not even have to say anything, but just love them well in that moment. So those are two of the things I heard at least two of the things. One is is you want to not make quick decisions when there's infidelity. Yeah. Number two, you don't. Uh, well, you do want community. That's number two. Sure. Uh, yeah. What is the, what's the third thing that uh, couples should do when there is infidelity? Yeah. So I think now, again, I keep coming back to therapists. I think now with the therapist, we've done those things. Now having that therapist who is going to help us um, really pace this process because every situation is slightly different, and that therapist has the training. Uh, hopefully if they're a good therapists. There's mostly good out there, but they're going to have the training to move this forward to make sure both have a voice in this matter. You know, sometimes, you know, the one who has betrayed, it's like, and this is kind of what the belief that I had, well, because of what I've done, I don't have a voice. I just need to sit back and take whatever, you know, is, is given. And I'm just grateful to be in this, but both, but again, the detonation has happened now we need the, the opportunity now is for something new. Yeah. Well, one of the things How that can, people don't realize, to get back to what you just said a second ago, yeah. one of the things that people don't realize is that you know, you, you've really disrupted that, that couple's dynamic when you have the infidelity because you know, now you know, the, the, the person who's been unfaithful, he knows, he or she knows that, that something wrong has been done. And like you said, the, the one impulse is just to, to take it, to say, yeah, I don't have a voice anymore. But when that happens, it's not it, it's not no longer a couple. You have That's one right. person who's running it now, and right. yeah, maybe they should. You know, maybe they have a you know they, they, they as the agreed party. Maybe they feel like they should have more of a say, and maybe they should. But it's still you have to have two people working together. Yeah, and maybe for a season that is the dynamic. Yeah, again, for a season, that nice yeah, clarification. And, and as, as we're rebuilding trust, but you can't long term have that parent child relationship. You know, we refer to it as uh, Melody calls it the scorecard. 
you know, if the if the the betrayed spouse basically say, okay, I'm going to work this out, but I've got this trump card that I can play at any moment. If we're ever in an argument, if we're ever in a disagreement, I'm going to lay down this this big trump card and I'm going to win. You know, that's that's eroding that intimacy that we've talked about as well. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me, Trey. I really do appreciate it. Anybody who wants to uh, uh, hear more, they can go to undoneredone.com slash podcast. Thank you again for taking the time to talk with me, Trey, and to share with us. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate what you do. Appreciate this opportunity to share.